Hello everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's time for another round of League One predictions. Um, it is just me with you this week. We've got 12 games to go through and uh, I am recording this on Tuesday afternoon so I haven't seen any of the scores that are taking place in the midweek games uh, so we're just going to do this one a little bit blind. But before we get into that, let's jump into how we people did last week in our ever popular and ever growing epic predictions game. Um yeah, let's jump in and start. Um and let me just no, actually no. Sorry, slow it down, way down. Um how you play? Very simple. All you do, if you want to get a shout out and be a part of next week's uh predictions, all you do is just put your predictions down in the comments. It's very, very easy to do. Uh, you get one point for a correct forecast or correct result, you get three points for a correct score. And obviously, the one with the highest amount of points is, cro is cried, crowned overall lord of very biased opinions world, at least for a week anyway. But champions can fall down to earth, as we have seen this week with Steve Watson, our current champion, Bringing up the rear this week with three points, just the one correct score for Cheltenham Town versus Shrewsbury. I got pretty much everything else wrong. Unlucky, Steve. Unlucky. I'm sure you'll do better this week. Uh, Paul Ridgely, Patreon backer, also got three points as well. Three correct uh, results in there for Paul, as did our Argyle, one of our many Argyle supporter. He also got three points too. The Football Crazy Podcast is back. And they missed a game. They missed a game out. Where is your result for Lincoln City? You're costing yourself points here. But you did get five points overall. So not a bad effort. James Huggett is next on the leaderboard. If I'm saying your name wrong, I do apologise. But James got five points as well. He did get a correct score in there though for the Cheltenham versus Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury town game. A new player in town is next, and that is Jamie Dawson. Jamie, thank you very much. And uh, here is your shout out. And uh, yeah, you got six points. So pretty good showing on your first time out. We're very biased opinions. That is over half of the scores predicted correctly. No, no, no correct scores, sorry, but over, over half of the results predicted correctly. Obviously the Oxford game was called off, but not a bad effort, Jamie. Six points on your first showing. Ryan Irving, uh, he has been a long-time player. He got six points as well. So, again, pretty good effort. There were no correct scores in there, though, for Ryan. A Plymouth fan, Liam Martin, another Plymouth fan, next up with seven. He got a correct score. Most, seems like a lot of people got that Cheltenham Shrewsbury Town one right. He got a correct score in there, but seven points overall. And Manny Stapper is weighing in with seven as well, but he did it the hard way. Two correct scores. Only one correct result. Correct score for Charlton, Plymouth and the Sunderland Ipswich. Well done to you, Ma uh, Manish. Multi-gamer channel. I think you've played before. If you haven't, welcome um, for the first time. If you have, welcome back. Uh, uh, Multi-gamer channel. Got seven points. He's in there with a correct score. He or she, I should say. Oh. He's in there with a correct score for Rotherham versus Cambridge. So very well done indeed. Jonathan Harris is next up on the leaderboard with eight points. Jonathan, extremely well done. One correct score in there. I mean, all the scores now are just amazing. Um, Portsmouth versus AFC Wimbledon was your correct score, sir. Uh, Darren James also got eight. He got a correct score for Wickham Wanderers versus Bolton Wanderers. Fireworks at Adams Park after that 1-0 win. And Darren James in with a very, very... Good eight points as well. Next up is Robert Allen. Robert Allen, um, one day you will win a round. Maybe. Um, but you got ten points and you got three correct scores in there as well. Uh, so unbelievably well done. One uh, Fireworks Adam Parks for you as well for 1-0 Wickham. 3-1 for Rotherham. 1-0 for the MK Dons. Very well done. But you are not champion. Get this. Probably the greatest performance we've had. So take a bow and everybody else stand up and applaud. For Paul Evans, what a result. Four correct scores. Unbelievable stuff, Jeff. Um, what did he get here? He got 
Fleetwood Town versus Morecambe. He got Portsmouth versus FC Wimbledon, Rotherham, Cambridge, and some fireworks at Adams Park for him as well. Paul Evans, the winner is you. Uh, you will do well to defend your crown with a score like that. And if that's the benchmark, wow. Wow. He's moved it up a notch. I don't think I'm ever going to get anywhere near winning. But thank you to everyone that played. Again, if you want to play next week, just put your comments down. Just put your predictions down in the comments of this video. Hit like, hit subscribe, all that jazz. This is the grandstanding and hot dogging out of the way because it's League One predictions time. And we start with Plymouth Argyle versus Wigan Athletic. The Plymouth finally beaten, finally vanquished this green army, but still flying high. Uh, amazing away support. And what an atmosphere for the third tier of English football at um, the Valley. Uh, just, you know, you went down 2-0 to Charlton, but what a run you've been on. And, um, you know, I'm sure you'll dust yourselves down and go again in this one. But a tough game. We're going to salty. We're going to grumpy at my beloved Oxford United after what happened at the weekend. Uh, and if you don't know, Oxford cancelled the game very late because of a COVID outbreak through the team of seven players going down. Most importantly, though, Simon Eastwood went down and Oxford could not get an emergency goalkeeper in, which queued up a whole host of Wigan fans saying that we're cheats and reminding us that you beat us 7-0. I know I was there. Um... And uh, I wanted to go to this game as well, so you know, I'm disappointed too. And uh, especially as the fact we are playing Fleetwood, um, that they, they smell a rat, much like we smell to rat to, uh, when Crewe and Swindon cancelled last season. So what goes around, comes around, for Oxford United's point of view, we've got to take the flag. But to spell it out, for some of the winning fans, our main keeper is Jack Stevens. He's out with glandular fever. Our secondary keeper is Simon Eastwood. He went down with COVID. I don't think they ever wanted to play those kids. We got two youth keepers. Carl Robinson didn't want them anywhere near the, the Oxford United goal to face you. So he probably just said, no, yeah, no, they, they can't play. But there was some reason for it too. Anyway, the game didn't go ahead. And I apologise. This is going to be a good game though. Um, and it's difficult to pick who's going to win it. But I'm going to back Plymouth just because they're at home. And just because Wigan were very mean and hurt my feelings. 2-1 to the Pilgrims. Sheffield Wednesday versus Wickham Wanderers. Fireworks at Adams Park. Has there ever been a greater scene than a 1-0 win over Bolton Wanderers? Wow, what a way to celebrate. Better than winning promotion and beating Oxford United in the playoffs that victory was. And how sweet that 1-0 win was. And I'm only jealous because we lost to Bolton earlier on in the season. But um, Sheffield Wednesday uh, got off to a flyer against Accrington. The game was done and dusted, but typical Wednesday, they can't kill anything off. Accrington came back at them, made it very nervy, ended up clinging on to a 3-2. When I say clinging on, they probably should score more goals. Uh, but yeah, good result for Wednesday, uh, back into the playoffs. And I actually think Wednesday are going to get back-to-back -back wins here again. I'm missing out midweek. I keep forgetting that. Um, but I think Wednesday will get a win here. I think it's going to be 2-1 win for Sheffield Wednesday. AFC Wimbledon versus Fleetwood Town. It's a struggle. A struggle for both of these sides. They're not in good form at all. Uh, Fleetwood went down to Morecambe. An incredible winner. We'll get to that in a little bit, but they are struggling, but they do have a chance. We'll see how they get on against a very depleted Oxford United side. Uh, Wimbledon, it's not going well for them either. And um, I just think this one's going to be on as even as at Plough Lane. I think it's going to be a 1-1 draw. Gillingham versus Portsmouth. Well, Portsmouth did get a good, hard, it was hard fought win over Wimbledon. They came from behind to win by Two goals to one, but they did get the job done. And the uh, the the main, well, one of the biggest threats in their side, Marcus Harness, coming up with a winner in that one. Gillingham, mm, not going well. Lost 2-0 at home, I think, to, or lost 2-0 away to crew of all teams. Where the hell did that one come from? I know Steve Evans was approached by Stevenage, but they turned it down. But it's not going well for the Gills at the moment. Very much struggling. I think Pompey going to go there and get a result. Bit of a resurgent for Oxfordshire's own Temple Cowley brothers. Gillingham nil, Portsmouth 2. 
Burton Albion versus Doncaster Rovers. Now, despite me thinking that Burton are disgustingly boring and a horrible side to play and offer nothing in this league except mediocrity and below, I do think they're going to beat this hapless Doncaster side who did get a nil-nil draw against Lincoln, but they're just not big enough points sinking to the bottom of the foot of the League One table. Hasselbank needs to get a win here. It's backs to the wall. It's gritty. It's what they do best. It's 1-0 to the Brewers. And the final one, just before we have a little break, is Lincoln City versus Accrington Stanley. I don't know why I keep backing Lincoln for goals. I don't know why. They don't seem like they're going to score any. I backed them against Doncaster. It was a drab 0-0 draw. I'm backing them to get some goals against Accrington, mainly because Accrington are a batshit crazy side and you just don't know what you're going to get. Nearly pulled out a remarkable comeback against Sheffield Wednesday, as I said. The second goal they scored is a beauty. Um, But I think this one's going to be on as even. I'm going for a bit of a bonkers game at Sinsel Bank. 2-2 draw. And just before we get into the second part of predictions, I do just want to draw attention to our Patreon. Uh, the details are on the screen there. So if you do want to support the channel, the best way to do it is through Patreon. We've got a few different tiers on there and there's all different um, benefits you get for the different tiers you select. Uh, there's a very, you know, just pick the one that's the most affordable for you if you do want to support us. And on behalf of myself and Thomas, it does mean the absolute world to us. Also, as well, go and check out Grandstand Betters. We're extremely jealous of Grandstand Betters, but we do congratulate our friends from the US. They are their their business in general, and especially their YouTube channel is blowing up. 4,000 subs, fantastic amount, and about probably about half the amount of time, very biased opinions. Um, we're not even, we're not even anywhere near. But anyway, I digress. A superb tips to website. Um, if you like sports and you like gambling on sports, this is these are the folks that you want to follow and uh, they will certainly help you out, certainly get you winning on your sports betting. So go and check out Grandstand Betters. Their details are on the screen. But after that brief little interlude, let's go back into League One and let's look at Cambridge United versus Sunderland. I don't know how they did it. I don't think their fans know how they did it, but they did beat Ipswich by two goals to nil. Eventually, a very, very dodgy, good well, not dodgy from Sunderland's point of view, dodgy bit of goalkeeping, which Sunderland capitalised on, and then a penalty. But if you play crap and you win, that's pretty good. And let's just give uh, Lee Johnson a pass for now. We can slag him off when you start losing again. I don't think you're going to lose this one. Cambridge, you've got... I, I mean, I, I've heard conflicting reports. I worked with a few Rotherham fans, and they said that Cambridge actually played pretty well in that game, and Rotherham weren't very good. So you can take heart in it, but you still lost the game 3-1. And I think this one's going to be a tough game. I mean, it's almost cliche, like a cup final for Cambridge United. Um, But I think some of them are going to be too strong and they're going to win 2-1. Oxford United's number one fans, Ipswich Town versus Crew Alexandra. They're still salty about us rolling around. I mean, all we did was play at for like 75, 80% of the game. All we did was roll around on the floor and fat and pretend to be Ill, a fat ill, pretend to be fouled. Look, we did it. It's fine, we did it again and we didn't. It's just what we do. Get over it, Switch fans. Um, you need to bounce back. Uh, not a great result against us, not a great result against Sunderland. And as I said, dodgy bit of goalkeeping. What is he doing? But it's unlike you to go two games without scoring a goal. And I think you'll correct it. I think maybe Piggott needs to come into the side. I don't know why he's not playing. Um, But if you can't beat Crew, who can you beat? And that is very harsh on Crew, who got a very much needed win um, in the last game out. But I think Ipswich will be far too strong. I'm going for a 3-1 win to the Tractor Boys. And let's keep that Oxford and Ipswich love going for a bit longer. Bolton Wanderers versus Cheltenham Town. Uh, so Bolton had to suffer the misery of the fireworks at Adams Park, going down 1-0 to Wickham. They've not been doing great. They did get a victory over Crew. Cheltenham are doing okay, picking up points, um, doing all right in League One, uh, definitely punching above their weight. And I think they'll be good enough to get a draw here. I'm going to go for Bolton 1, Cheltenham Town 1. Morecambe versus the Milton Keynes Dons. Stop. Stop. If you haven't seen Cole Stockton's winner 
for Morecambe against Fleetwood. Stop this video, go and watch it, and come back. I will wait. I'm happy to wait. What a winner. What a goal. It's not the first time he's done it this season as well. What a striker this guy is. And... Um, a much needed win for Morecambe and you know we talk about them being a good side but they're just not just give away stupid goals and stuff like that so it was great to see them get a win in that one but I do think that they that's going to be short-lived success because MK Doms look every bit of formidable side this season another good home win for them over Burton and I think the MK Dons will win this one quite comfortably. I think it's going to be Mork nil. MK Dons 2. Rosebury Town versus Charlton Athletic. Yes, um, this looks like it should be a cut and dry away win for Charlton. And what a resurgence for the Addicts ever since Nigel Adkins has left. They look a much better side. And when I see players like Elliot Lee playing there, it just wounds me. He's not playing for Oxford anymore. Uh, what a great win over Plymouth. As I say, they haven't lost. Plymouth hadn't lost since the first day of the season. So you will decide to vanquish them. And I'm so glad that Oxford played Charlton earlier on in the season. Trojan haven't really had an upturn in form. But last weekend, they lost to Cheltenham. Um, they did take the lead. And I think they lost by two goals to one. So it's been a struggle for them. And um, I, I can see... I can see Charlton just getting a nice, easy win here. A big win for Charlton. I'm going big. Shrewsbury nil. Charlton three. Usually this is about time where I talk about um, no other results mattering and how the all conquering, all singing and dancing Oxford United are playing. But this time, I am literally hiding behind my hands. I would hide behind the sofa if I could. It's Oxford United versus Rotherham. And this could be a bloodbath of a game. Um... Oh my God. COVID has struck Oxford's camp with seven players out and some big players out as well. It is a makeshift defence with an emergency loan goalkeeper who we do not know who it is. We might have been able to scrape past Fleetwood because they've not been very good. But Rotherham are fucking good. <laughs> and Rotherham are going to probably kill us in this game. Um, they didn't even play very well, but quite methodically beat uh, Cambridge by three goals to one. Paul Warren doing a great job, yo-yoing the side between the Championship and League One. Um, but when they're in League One, they're always one of the best sides. I mean, Smith is going to have a field day. I think Grigg is going to have a field day. And I think just about anybody in the attacking um, persuasion for Rotherham is going to have a field day, especially I think they're going to be licking their lips at the possibility of sending set pieces into our box as well. So, very difficult. I can't, I've got to, you know the rules of the game though. I mean, I, this, if you're a Rotherham fan watching this for the first time, we have a rule that we can't show weakness against our team. And I so I have to back Oxford to win this. And it's foolish and it's madness. 2-1 Oxford. And on a very sombre note, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that watched this video. Um, if you could hit like and if you could hit subscribe, that would help us out a lot. Um, but just for watching any moment of any video does mean the world to both of us. Although I speak on behalf of Thomas, who is not here, but normal service will no doubt resume next week as uh, we do Premier League and we do League One and the fixtures are coming thick and fast. We might do some bonus videos. We might not. Don't, you know, don't count on it. But see you soon.